purpose in life is really to point the eyes of the world away from me and to him. I grew up in a pastor's home, moved all over the West Coast and Midwest, um, there are ministers. When I was 18, moved to New York City, um, left to do inner city work. Through the church, I ended up going to the neighborhood and I was so drawn um, to the situations, you know, seeing the, the way these kids were living and their parents just openly drugged out in front of them. You know, I, I was really compelled to do something, even if it was just me looking them in the eyes and having a conversation with them was more than they really got at home. A lot of the stuff I write is really raw and, and very real to me. And I've actually had a lot of people say, when you speak about this, it, it feels like, you know, maybe I'm the person you're talking about, but it feels like you actually experienced it and went through it, but you didn't. How do you do that? And I think they're always shocked to hear that I actually have, you know, prayed and asked God to allow me um, to carry the pain of the people that I write about so that I can accurately and appropriately um, write and express it. He's screaming my name like he needs to be heard. Baby, what you got to say? Miss, miss, my brother's dead. Stabbed in the wrist and the heart. Found in a laundry bag, he said, in the Brooklyn Park. Story too familiar there in the South Bronx. It's 156th and Fox where a five-year-old boy steps through blood where he walks. Just wondering what he discover one day like his brother. The life on the block sometimes ends early in a box. After violent years, silent tears, a life chasing shadows and running from mirrors. And these are true stories of lost children of the city. Only father they knew was Tupac and Biggie. So tell me, out of this pain, what shall arise from the rubble of a life built on hip-hop lies. It was mind-blowing the first time I heard it. My first time was in front of like 800 teenagers from the projects. Hi. Hi. Uh, my name is Araya. Open mics can be very, very brutal. I remember being so nervous, especially in front of that audience. Um, what are you gonna do? I kind of whisper in her ear and she says, I'm gonna do spoken word. And I'm just thinking to myself, oh God. I'm pretty sure I had pigtails that day just to complete the picture. And I said, well, what, what's your piece on? What's your spoken word piece on? And she was like, hip hop. So, you know, I had to like be gangster because I was in front of this audience that I couldn't let them see me sweat. Oh, here's this white girl from the suburbs gonna do a piece on hip hop. I thought, man, I really, I really gotta just give it my best. Even if it really sucks, I just have to give it my best. From the minute she opened up her mouth and she got right into it, it was just incredible. I remember the very beginning being nervous, but then just kind of getting into zone. And next thing you know, I was walking off and this place was crazy. Everyone was on their feet. I mean, it was just incredible to hear Oriah. Where are you a fake like the rest? A fraudulent foe claiming the name of a god you don't know. What power you can't hold. I feel sorry for y'all when your fate unfolds. Cause see, I don't know too much, but I know a little bit. Enough to know that God seek after hearts that are legit. And he's really not concerned with the rims on your bins or your iced out friends. You could never be large enough to walk in his Tims. Cause everywhere you go, he done been. Yeah, Jesus. Jesus walks with you, but do you walk with him? What separates us is things like, you know, culture and, and color and background and economic status and things like that. But what we have in common is so much greater and that is brokenness and suffering and loss and um, heartache and struggle and I can quickly get past our differences. I mean, it may take me a minute for you to look at me and be like, who is this white girl? She's got nothing to say. But I'm trying to connect with them on the one thing that we have in common is that everyone in this room, no matter how big or small, has dealt with pain, suffering, struggle. And so I speak to those things because 
once I speak to you on that level and connect to you, you totally forget about what we have that's different. I think I was about 20 when I found out that I had lupus. I remember when I was driving to the doctor to get the results, just being compelled to speak out as I was praying on my way there and tell him nothing would separate him from my love or the way that I live my life. That, that I would use every bit of um, pain that I've endured, whether it's physical or, or emotional or everything I've seen, um, that, that I would allow the weight of that pain to really sink in and to become a tool. I think my purpose is to be a voice that's here to set the record straight about who Jesus really is, and that he is love, and that he is freedom, that he's not religion or law, that he is freedom. Because everywhere you go, he done been, yeah, Jesus walks with you, but do you walk with him?